Habari Ghani. Yes, it's Kwanzaa time. And this story is about the first principle of Nguza Saba, Umoja. It is my adaptation of the story Seven Spools of Thread by Angela Shelf Maderis. Once there is a village in Ghana there lived a man and a woman and their sons. Not three, not four, not five, but seven sons. Oh, they were handsome. Their skin is dark and smooth as mahogany. And their limbs, ooh, straight and strong as a warrior's spear. But they were a disappointment sometimes especially after the mother died and the father had to be Baba and Mama for both, for both for all the seven sons. They were disappointing to her fa their father because they argued and they fussed all day long and all night long. Oh, they would fuss about going to work in the family's fields, picking up yams. Woo! The oldest would say, it sure is hot out here. No, it's not, the youngest would say. I feel a cool breeze. Or they would fuss about when they were going to quit work and go back home. Oh, my goodness gracious. Woo! Said the second son. I do believe that the sun is setting and the moon is coming up. We need to leave now. Oh, no. We haven't finished. We have to finish this up, said the fourth son. And on and on they would go until they had to go down, leave the farm, and go back home, where the father had prepared a wonderful meal for them. And they walked the quickly, of course, because they were a little hungry. And they walked and they formed a line from the tallest to the smallest, from the oldest to the youngest. When they got in there and they got their bowls of stew together and foo foo, ah, said the oldest, what is this? You gave me less than them. Oh, no, 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 the father. Bobby said, no, I gave everyone the same amount. Hmm. Well, if that's so, said the youngest, I can, I, I, look at this. This is a little tiny bit. I'll never grow eating this little bit. Well, if you don't want it, said the fourth son. He grabbed a piece of meat and said, I'll eat it. Oh, why are you so greedy, said the youngest son. Oh, they went on and on and on until it was dark time. Well, one day the father also died. And the next day, the chief called the seven sons to come to the courtyard. So they came walking down in the straight line from the tallest to the shortest, from the oldest to the youngest, until they got to the courtyard and they bowed before the chief and they all sat down. And the chief said, I'm glad you came. I have news for you. Your father has left as an inheritance for all of you, all his land and his possessions. Oh, wow. I know. Well, I should be getting all of it, you know, said the oldest, because I'm the oldest. <laughs> I'm the youngest. I'm getting, it. I'm getting it all. When he said, oh, he meant all me, all for me. Ha, huh, said the middle son. I'm his favorite. I've always been his favorite. And they started tussling and pushing and elbowing and rolling around in the dust until the chef, the, the chief said, stop this moment. And they got themselves together and brushed the dust off their clothing. And they sat there, but they eyed each other suspiciously. The chief went on, from this day forward, you may not argue or fuss or fight one another. And I have something for you. And he opened up a basket and there were seven spools, different colors. Come forth, 
And the oldest came and he gave him a red one. And for the second one, he gave him a green one. And then a blue for the third. And then for the fourth, he gave him a yellow one. And then for the fifth, it was the orange. And for the sixth, the black. And for the youngest, the white. And they took their spools. And your father wants you to take these spools of thread and turn them into gold. And you must do it before the moon rises tonight. And if you cannot do it, or if you fuss and fight, all of your father's land and his possessions will go to the poorest of the village. Now go! You don't have much time. And off they went, hurrying down the path from the oldest to the youngest, from the tallest to the shortest, till they got to their house and they all sat down. It was very strange because there was silence, silence, no sound whatsoever came from the seven brothers. And they just sat, not speaking, not fussing, not fighting. Till the oldest said, you know, what we need to do is to make peace with one another. Let's shake hands and give hugs. And that's what they did, each and every one to the other one. And they said, well, said the fourth son, I don't think that our father would have given us a task to do that was impossible. Hmm, said the fifth son, I agree. Totally, I agree. Well, what if there's gold in the Spools of thread. Ah, and they looked towards the window and the sunlight was coming in. And so each one took their spool and held it up in the sun light. There was the red, you know, and then the orange and the green, no, nothing. The blue, here, let me, let me look at the yellow. No, and the black, nothing, and the white, nothing. Well, said the fifth son. It was a good idea, brother. It was a good idea. There, there's no gold nuggets in this. Hmm. I know, said the youngest. Why don't we just take one spool and just make lots of cloth of it? Well, said the second son, that would be good, except we don't have enough spools of one color. And you know, it would take a lot of spools of one color. Hmm, yeah. So the oldest said, what if, what if we take all of these colors and kind of use all of them? Oh, that is such a good idea, said the sixth son, except for the third son well, said, well, I agree it's a good idea, but did you, you know our people are not used to wearing but one color for their clothes. Yes, but, said the oldest, what if? It was so spectacular that they would want to wear it. Oh, they all said. Well, in that case, said the youngest, we better get started. Yes. And so they went out into the forest and they got some wood and they brought it back and they were just working together and the youngest would hold it together so that all the young older ones could wind that, all those sticks together to make a loom. And they began to weave, and they began to weave. And oh, all those beautiful colors. And some of them had stripes, and some of them had stars, and even some had figures that looked like birds' wings. Well, when it was all done, they gathered everything up, and each one of them had a basket, and they put the cloth in all the baskets. And they took their baskets, put them on their heads, and said, let's go to the market. And off they went just a walking, kind of fast. The baskets are a little heavy, you know. But there they were in a line from the tallest to the shortest, from the oldest to the youngest. And when they got to the marketplace, the oldest said, come, come, come and see the most beautiful material in the world. Come, come, come look. And people began to gather around. Ooh, one woman said, Look at these bright colors. That's gorgeous. Ah, yeah. Oh, I even see a pack 
Look at bird wings in this one, said another woman. Ah, let me feel the texture. Oh, yes, the texture is really great. And then the crowd became silent, and they started to move aside as this wonderful, tall, dark man, dressed in splendid robes, came forth off of his horse and through the middle of the crowd. All the crowd knew he, who he was. He was the king's treasurer. Well, well, let me see what you have here. And they presented the cloth to him. Oh, <laughs> I think this will make a perfect gift for the king. Yes, yes, indeed. What's the price, please? I want it all. The oldest said, well, cloth that's fit for a king costs the price that only a king can pay. One bag of gold. Oh, all right. And he got the gold out and spread it out. I gathered up. I want to take it now. And they put it all together and he carried it to his horse and off he went towards the king's palace. Oh, the brothers were so excited. They said, oh, wait, wait, we gotta hurry up. We gotta get back. The moon might be coming up. Oh, it looks like the moon's, the sun is setting. We know the moon is coming. And so they hurried. Oh, they ran down that path. Woo, they were just rushing. Oh, in a line from the tallest to the smallest, from the oldest to the youngest. Woo, and when they finally got to the chief's courtyard, hello. Hello, hello, Chief. We have good news. Yes, he came out and he sat on the stool. Yes, what is this news you have? We have turned the seven spools of thread into gold. Look, and they spread the gold out. Ah, very good. But let me ask you something. Have you fussed? Have you fought with one another? Oh, no, said the youngest. We were too busy working together. Mm-mm. Well then, you have finally absolutely understood the lesson your father wanted to teach you. So, his land and his possessions are all yours. Oh, that's wonderful, yes. But everyone was happy except for the youngest son. He looked so sad. What is it, my brother, said the oldest. Well, we have an inheritance, but the poor people of our village, they do not have anything like this. Hmm. That's very true. Said the second son, what if we teach everyone in the village how to make this cloth and they too would be able to prosper? Oh yeah, that's a good idea. The chief said, well, you have really learned a lesson for your father. And off they went down that road from the tallest to the smallest, from the oldest to the youngest. And they got into that house and they began to plan. And many months later, everyone in the village had learned how to weave this marvelous cloth. And they continued to do that ever since. And the seven sons never fussed, worked perfectly well in the, in the land, on the farm. Now you may think that this is just a story, but I want to tell you that I have visited that village. It's called Kamasi and is in Ghana. And they wove together something we call kente cloth. Now I know back then it was for royalty. The kings and queens would toss, especially the kings, over a piece of cloth over their shoulders. Some wound it around their waist. But as time went on, those of us who are of African descent said, hey, we have a royalty too. And so they began to wear it also. This story, The Seven Spools of Thread, is about the first principle of Nguza Saba called Umoja. So everyone have a happy Kwanzaa. Thank you.